So we've just learned how to estimate the population mean and its uncertainty from a number of samples of our population. What do we do if we have only a single sample? How do we estimate the population mean from that from only one sample? And we would use the same equation, right? So mu is equal to our grand mean. In this case, our grand mean is the same of our uh, sample mean, plus and minus z sub alpha over 2 times our standard deviation of our sample mean. Now, in the previous example, we had numerous samples, so we could actually uh, we could calculate this by just taking the standard deviation of our sample means. But here we just have one sample, so how do we make how do we estimate that? Well, if you recall from last week, we learned that the standard deviation of the population mean is about equal to the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of the sample size. And again, this is for large. It, uh, the approximation is better uh, for large n. So, but we don't, we don't know sigma. We don't know this standard deviation of our population mean. But we do know that the, um, we can estimate it from the standard deviation of our sample. So thus, mu is estimated as the sample mean plus and minus z sub alpha over 2 times our standard deviation of our sample divided by the square root of our size of our sample. And recall that this is, we can use this for large samples. This meaning we use the z value in our the z values in our normal distribution. And a large sample, just a rule of thumb, Wessel uses n greater than or greater than thirty or so. Okay, so what do we do if we have smaller samples? Well, we use a similar equation, but instead of the normal distribution, we have to use a t distribution. That is, x bar won't follow a normal distribution, it follows a t distribution. And um, that depends on the number of degrees of freedom. And we'll, we'll refer to that, the number of degrees of freedom as, as nu, the Greek letter nu. And we'll define what that is shortly. So before, when we had large samples, we could, we could use the normal distribution for x bar for any population. But here we have to assume that the population distribution is normal. Okay, so this uh, this test is a little bit more, or this uh, statistic, this t statistic, 
strictly applies to, the, to a normal population distribution, so it's a little bit more restrictive, but this is what we have to do for, for smaller samples. So to estimate mu again, we would say that mu is equal to our estimate or, or our sample mean plus and minus t for a given significance level divided by 2 times our standard deviation divided by the square root of n. And this equation comes from the definition of t, which is a new normalized value for x bar. And that's um, x bar minus mu divided by the standard deviation again of x bar. And again, remember we're estimating our standard deviation of our sample means by the standard deviation of our sample divided by the square root of n. So this statistic, this quantity, has degrees of freedom is equal to n minus 1. Okay, because we have uh, we have n, this is our sample, these are our number of measurements, and we have one quantity, uh, x bar, uh, in our definition for t, so we have to subtract one from our number of degrees of freedom. So once you decide on alpha, given alpha, or alpha over 2, and nu, you can refer to a t-table and I'll show you one in just a second for the correct t value. So here's a comparison between a normal distribution and t distribution. And you can you can run this script. It's avail I'll make it available on our course website and that's what produced this. The normal distribution is this light blue curve. Uh, I guess it's um, behind all the other curves. And I'm showing four T distributions for four different degrees of freedom. So when we have only two degrees of freedom, you can see this green curve. The sample means, if you, um, if you sample a population with only two degrees of freedom, the sample means are predicted to fall within a, a a broader probability distribution. It's less focused on the true mean of the population. But as the degrees of freedom increase, then the probability distribution becomes more focused towards the true mean of the population and uh, starts to approach the normal distribution. So um, at 30 or 100 degrees of freedom, you can see that the T distribution follows the normal distribution very closely. Um, again, illustrating that for uh, low degrees of freedom, say less than 30, it's better to use the T distribution um, when estimating the population mean, whereas for larger uh, degrees of freedom or larger um, and uh, therefore larger n, a normal distribution is, um, is appropriate.